Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your teacher, Mr. Stano. And we're going to continue on our hydrology discussion, now looking at what happens when water does infiltrate and percolate into the ground. Well, when water infiltrates and percolates into the ground, it becomes groundwater. So we can see here, we have our precipitation comes down, infiltration, percolating through the ground, moving through. And what you can see is that it hits a few different zones and moves through the ground. Our first zone we're going to be concerned with is our zone of aeration. And we see the word basically aerate in here. So this is a mix of air and water within the pore spaces. As the water percolates further down, it's going to hit our water table. This is the top of our zone of saturation. So in our zone of saturation, the pore spaces between the sediments is filled with water. The ground is saturated. And at that point, it can continue and move. We're going to go over each of these terms again in the next slide, but I would also notice is that our water table follows the topography of the land. It closely mimics it. I would get this diagram down. It's a nice little diagram to have. So here's a couple of the terms just uh, explained out for you. So we have our zone of aeration. It's just a layer of soil under our surface, but the pores of the, of the ground contain both water and air. We have our zone of saturation, like I said. That's the soil completely saturated with water. And the water table is going to be on top of that zone of saturation. And like I said, it reflects the topography of the land. we could take a look a little bit closely more at the sediments that make up these few different layers. So we can see in our zone of aeration, we have water that just surrounds those particles and we have open air pockets in them. The pores are mixed air and water. Zone of saturation, no air, pores filled with water and our water table lies right on top of that zone of saturation. Nice little diagram. If you can get it great or make a simplified one like we see with this one and here, that'll be great. If not, it's no big deal. We always have these screencasts here for you to take a look at. This right here basically is a is a little bit uh, looking outwards a little bit and just how we can have certain features of the land, the water table and groundwater flow. It's a nice little picture of the water cycle also. But we have our water that infiltrates into the ground and hits our water table. Notice that the water is following the topography of the land, so it goes from high to low where it can be intersected by a number of things. For instance, a pumping well. You can see here at the pumping well, the water does dip. You'll see in the next diagram that there's a specific name for the dip of water around that well. Here's our water table. Notice that we have a stream or surface water that is actually feeding, or that well is actually pulling from that stream. If the well was not there, the groundwater flow would be continuing towards the stream. So we can definitely have a number of different scenarios occurring with our water table and groundwater flow. Here is a couple of things. We see that cone of depression where our wells are. Right there, that cone of depression is as we draw water up and out, we see a drop in that water table. Notice that the, the water table is still following the topography of the land. And this is our wet season water table. Notice it's a lot higher. In our dry season water table, when we're pumping or pulling out more water, see that it drops. So our dry season, we pull out water. And the water table drops. In our wet season one, we increase recharge or we put water in. When we put water in, it increases our water table or it makes it higher. So we can see seasonal changes in our water table. And as you would expect, when we have higher rates of evaporation, increased temperatures like we'd see in the summertime, our water table is gonna drop. And then what we can see is during the spring, when we have melting of snow, increased precipitation, we have more recharge and our water table will go back up. 
so like we said a few times, the water table reflects the topography of the land, but water flows from areas where it's high to areas where it's low. High to low. So just like winds flow from high to low, water is the same thing. It flows from high to low. So in this diagram, the water flows down this way. We're going to stop here with this part of the screencast before we go on to basically looking at streams or surface water. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.